Bruch Maboyan. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. Uh, this will be, uh, the next two weeks, in fact, will be very special lectures on the priestly blessing. Um, this is something that we do in the synagogue over the uh, holidays. Will be, uh, priestly blessing will be done about five times. So I thought it would be a good idea to get some idea and understanding as what it really is. So tonight's lecture will be an introduction, so to speak, to the priestly blessing. And then next week we'll actually go over it word for word. So our temple has been destroyed for almost 2,000 years. And we have been in the Galut, in the exile, ever since. Many of the laws concerning the temple and its service are really no longer applicable. Now, we fulfill our obligations with our lips, as it says in the book of Hosea 14.3, that we will render the prayer of our lips in lieu of the sacrifice of oxen. During the temple era, people were concerned about spiritual defilement. If you were an Israelite and you were spiritually defiled, you were not permitted to enter within the precincts of the Holy Temple. Now, this restriction was not limited to the Israelites. It was also true for a Levite and even a Kohen, a priest. They could not serve in the Temple if they were in a state of spiritual defilement. Today, for the most part, excluding the laws of family purity, spiritual defilement does really, not, really does not play a part in our daily lives. However, if you're a Kohen, uh, then this concept of spiritual defilement still does exist today. Now, even though all of us are considered to be defiled by the dead, which is the highest form of spiritual defilement, it really has little, if any, effect on our daily lives. Again, that is unless you are paternal descendant of Aaron, a Kohen. Then, even today, there are still restrictions, restrictions that apply to you. A Kohen still has a Torahic obligation to bless the people, even though there is no temple. As it states in the portion of Nusso, this is how you shall bless the children of Israel. God gave the ability to confer blessings to Abraham Avinu, Abraham our father. As it says in Genesis, all that bless you will be blessed. Abraham did not want to give that ability to bless to Yishmael, so to speak, Islam. So he left it up to God to decide. God gave the power of blessing to Yitzchak, our father, who then gave it to Yaakov, rather than to Asa, his firstborn son, Christianity. In turn, Yaakov then gave the power over to his 12 sons. Now, God told Moshe that the power of blessing would belong to all of the children of Israel, but that it would be administered by the Kohanim, based on Rabbeinu Bechai. Now, this Torah obligation puts certain restrictions on Kohanim, even today. A Kohen may not come in contact with a dead body, since a human being, while they are alive, is the highest form of existence, a status achieved by virtue of the godly soul that resides within one's body. When that soul departs, death, then that which was the highest form of existence, now, becomes the lowest and is, so to speak, the granddaddy of all defilements. So now the only way the Torah allows us to remove the spiritual defilement from our bodies is by being sprinkled with the ashes of the Pura Aduma, the red heifer. However, since the destruction of the temple, we have not been able to administer this rite. That being the case, basically we are all in a state of spiritual defilement of the dead. Still, a coin, a priest is forbidden by Torah law from going to cemeteries, funeral homes, and even hostels where there may be a Jewish dead body, even today. Now, even when a coin dies, they are buried at the entrance to a Jewish cemetery. This is done so that the relatives do not have to have common contact with any more defilement that is necessary. Even if a coin is in a cemetery attending to the burial of their dead relatives, still, they may not visit other graves, though they are already in the cemetery. Now, all of these restrictions are still observed today. So, the reason being, so that the Kohen can do it, bless the people on the holidays. This service gets its name from the Hebrew word duchen, which means to stand. The, the priest would stand on a platform, and from there they would bless the people. Now, the verse in also states, speak to Aaron and his sons. 
why is Aaron, Aaron's name mentioned? Since Aaron was, as it states in Pirkei Avot, chapter 1, Mishnah 12, a always shalom and a rodev shalom, a lover of peace and a pursuer of peace. Now, in the desert, he had no ulterior motive in blessing the people, since all the people's needs were basically supplied to them by God Almighty himself. So, too, all Kohanim should bless the people just as Aaron did, with no ulterior motive. This is the case, even though in the future, the Kohanim would be supported by the 24 gifts which the Torah requires the people to give them based on the Kasav Sofer. Now, the commentaries state that there are those who might think that the reason why the Kohanim bless the people is so they can receive more material gifts. So, to dispel this idea, when the Kohanim bless the people, what they do is they open their hands rather than cup them. In addition, they lift their hands up to heaven to show that their blessing is without any thought of ulterior motive or financial gain. From the wording of the blessing in the Torah, we learn another lesson. Verse, uh, verse in chapter 6, verse number 23 states, Ko tevarahu, so shall you bless. Why did the Kohanim raise their arms and then stretch out their hands when they bless the people? It's to teach us that a person must do more than just bless. They must connect their blessing to an action. The Torah does not command the coin to bless the people, only how to. Since a coin wants to bless the people, there's no necessity for a command. It kind of flowed naturally. When the Kohana bless the people, they must first remove their shoes. But why? This is an allusion to Moshe, our teacher, and, and the burning bush. When they bless the people, the ground that they are standing on becomes holy, just like with Moshe and the burning bush. So just like Moshe was commanded by God to remove his shoes, so too they, the Kohanim, must remove their shoes. Removing shoes is an allusion to the feelings that a leader must entertain towards his people. When one removes their shoes, they feel every little pebble. So too a Jewish leader must be sensitive to all the needs of his followers. Even more so, the blessing must be given from a feeling of love. The blessing that the Kohen makes before he blesses the people ends with the Hebrew word, be ahava, with love. The numerical value of the word, Hebrew word be ahava, is 15. Interestingly enough, there are 15 words in the priestly blessing. This is also an allusion to our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who all lived in the world together for 15 years. The number 15 is also an allusion to our three patriarchs and the 12 tribes of Israel, 15. Each of the words of the priestly blessing correspond to a different part of the hand. The first 14 words correspond to the 14 finger bones of the hand, the, the palm of the hand, the 15th represents the last word of the blessing, which is shalom, peace. This is one reason that we place our, so we call the koishel bracha, our cup of blessing, when we make kiddush or, or do anything, in our palm, whenever we perform, we perform any mitzvah with wine. Additionally, the Ben Ishchai states that each word of the priestly blessing supplies the spiritual sustenance of one of the 15 meals that we eat during a week. Now, the fifth, number 15 also connects with the creation of the world. According to our sages, when God created this world, he created the upper world with the Hebrew word, pardon me, Hebrew letter, Yud, which is a numerical value of 10, and our lower world with the Hebrew letter, He, a numerical value of 5. 10 and 5, 15, which makes up one of God's names, which has a numerical value of 15, spelled with a yud and a he, we pronounce it ka, not to say it correctly. The Kohanim lift their hands also when they bless the people. The Magan Avram, the commentary on Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, states that if a Kohen does not love the congregation or if the congregation does not love him, then he cannot bless them. The verse ends with the Hebrew words, Amor lahem, saying to them, now, the word amor is singular, and the word lahem is plural, 
strange. This alludes to the fact that the chazan, the cantor, singular, calls out the blessings first, and then the kohanim, plural, then bless the congregation. This is also why when there is only one kohen to bless the congregation, the cantor does not call out loud the word kohanim, again, priest in a plural form, before the kohen blesses the congregation, based on Rabbein of Achai. The cantor says the first word of the blessing, Yivarechecha, and may he bless you. And then the Kohanim repeat his word. The reason for this is that the Kohanim are compared to an empty vessel. They have nothing to give. But by the Chazan saying the word Yivarechecha, and may he bless you, God fills their vessel, and then they are able to bless the congregation based on a Kliyakr. So we must understand that it is not the Kohen who blesses the people. In reality, he is only a conduit through which God's blessings are given to the Jewish nation. This is indicated by the last words connected to this blessing, which states, And I will bless them. That is the reason why the Kohanim turn their faces towards the people during the blessing and also why they don't face the ark. The congregation is forbidden to look at the Kohanim when they are blessing the people, and this prevents them from thinking that it is the Kohen who causes the effect of his blessing. They are not the central factor. Their power flows from the congregation, and their blessing is part of a communal prayer based on Rav Shimshu before Hirsch. Now, when their hands are extended toward the people, they separate their fingers in a very special fashion. Not only people, but even the Kohanim are forbidden to look at their hands while they bless the people. And this is one of the reasons that the Kohanim also cover their faces with their talit. Now we also have a custom to cover our faces with our talit, our prayer shawl, while the Kohanim are turned and facing the congregation. We do this since we have a tradition that the Shekhinah, the divinity of God, shines through their fingers while they bless the people. You know, many fathers will bring their young children under their talit with them so that they can be blessed by the priests. You know, I always see it as a, a warm family moment, notwithstanding the bickering that goes on between the siblings underneath that talit. As a bit of trivia about Leonard Niboy, alias Mr. Spock, who played the part of the Vulcan in the early Star Trek series and movies, he was Jewish, and not only that, he was a Kohen. He incorporated his knowledge of how the Kohanim placed their fingers when blessing the people into his character. He would make a sign with the fingers of his hand that supposedly originated in his foreign country of Vulcan. This was a form of greeting. In reality, it was the way the Kohanim arranged their fingers when they blessed the people. The Kohanim can only bless the congregation after the people ask them to do so. The Kohan violate a positive commandment of the Torah only if they refuse to bless the congregation after they have been asked. If they are not asked, then there is no violation. The custom is that after Kedusha, the Kohanim are asked by the sexton to bless the people and then the Levim, the Levites, are asked to go out with them so that they can wash their hands of the Kohanim before they bless the people based in the Gemara and Sota. Now, God told Moshe Ko. Bless. The Hebrew word ko has numerical value of 25. The first word in the priestly blessing is yivarechucha, and may he bless you. The word bracha, in Hebrew blessed, is found 25 times in the Torah. The last word of the priestly blessing is shalom, peace. The word shalom is found again 25 times in the Torah. Now, many of our major prayers end with the word shalom, peace, such as the Amida, the standing prayer, or birchat mazon, grace after meal. Also the Kaddish, a praise to God. When the Torah lists all the sacrifices, the last one that is mentioned is the shlomin, the peace offering. Now, the first six words of the Shema Yisrael Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, is the only prayer that we recite daily that has a, has a Torahic obligation. It is where we accept upon ourselves 
the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. It too has 25 letters. I'm sure that it was not an action that the world was created on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of El, or that the 25th word in the description of creation is or, light, and that Hanukkah, the festival of lights, falls out on the 25th day of the month of Kislev. The question is asked. We know that the Kohanim bless the people, but who blesses the Kohanim? The answer also connects to the, the, the number 25. We read in the book of Leviticus that the priests were given 24 gifts as a payment of sorts for their service to the people. So the answer to the question of who blesses the priest is that they receive their blessing directly from God Almighty himself. This is given to them as a gift for blessing the people out of love. So now there are 25 priestly blessings based on a Cleoka. Now the obvious question has to be, why doesn't God bless us himself? Why agree with the blessing that the Kohanim state? The answer given is God knows whether a person deserves to be blessed or not. The Kohen does not. So the Kohen blesses all the people, and then God agrees even though some of the people may not deserve the blessing, based on Asher, Asher of Karlin. Now the first verse of the priestly blessing has three words, which allude to the three people that are called up for an aliyah, going up to the Torah on weekdays and on Shabbat afternoon. The second verse in the blessings has five words, which alludes to the five people that are called up to the Torah on holidays. And the third verse has seven words, which alludes to the seven people that are called up to the Torah on Shabbat morning. This will bring peace to the people, and that even though it seems as if the Kohanim and Levim get the majority of the Aliyahs, in reality, over a weekly period, there is a total of 16 Aliyahs. Eight go to the Kohanim and Levim, and eight go to the Israelites. Peace between all of the children of Israel. So from the priestly blessing, we learn a valuable bit of information. Think of it. If every time you bless someone, someone else, or wish them well, you are in essence blessing yourself, then why wouldn't you be blessing people constantly with all types of benefits, happiness, joy, health, wealth, children? <laughs> why leave anything out? Blessing someone else, wishing them well, has immediate benefits. The person that you have blessed feels good. They're smiling. You also feel good. You're smiling. It's a win-win situation. This is even before God has fulfilled your blessing. Think of how good the Kohana must feel, knowing that they are bringing down blessings to the member of their congregation, their friends, their neighbors, even strangers who are in need of God's assistance. And the people listening to the words of this ancient blessing, connecting us to our past and guiding us towards our future. May the priestly blessing that we recite this year through the Kohanim be filled with all the blessings that we need, and may it be given and received be ahava, with love, together with the coming of Mashiach to Canaan, now. Uh, let me wish you all again a Ksiman uh, Chasima Tova. You should all be blessed for a good year, a sweet year, a safe year, a healthy year. All blessings that are good. And again, as I mentioned, it should be a time of the ultimate peace with Mashiach Tzakeinu. Again, it's a troubled world in all ways, regardless of what's happening. That's what we really need. Not that we didn't need it before, but even more so now. May God answer all your prayers in the positive and uh, again, maybe a good year for all of us. And thank you again for listening. And uh, again, all blessings. Next week, again, we will finish up the priestly blessing by going through the words within the blessings. Hopefully you'll be able to attend. And this way, when you hear the priest blessing, you hopefully it will have much more meaning uh, to the service. Again, thank you very much. God bless and be well.